Uh, Phil, we'll know we'll about your history out here. How much is this a homecoming for you? Uh, it's not as much a homecoming for me as it is CJ and Joffre. But, um, you know, it's, it certainly feels very familiar. Uh, it's somewhere I, I love playing cricket and I love being here, so I'm very glad to be back. And happy to be representing England over here as well in a, in a big tournament. I guess when you were a young lad, that victory. Yeah, it was. I, I watched the final year in 2010. Um, and, you know, that was pretty special. It's the stuff you dream of as a kid. So to be back here and have the opportunity to play for England in a World Cup is, is, isn't something I ever thought I'd be doing, but certainly very special. And I full circle then is for you to be at the final again out here and wearing the shirt and uh, getting it all by the Yeah, it is. It's, there's, there's a bit of a way to go, but but that's that's absolutely the goal we're here to win. Can I ask you, uh, Phil, what do you feel has changed in your game? It feels like you've kicked on and, and hit, as not found a new gear, hit a new level from where you were, say, a few months ago when you were in West Indies and said, I'm a bit surprised there's no IPL contract. Uh, I think I was in line for one, and then you've actually gone to the IBL, lifted it up, and sort of <laughs> did one of the sort of ones to watch out here. Yeah, it's um, there's it's been a combination of things. It's not really been any one thing. I think the opportunity to gain more experience in international cricket's been uh, definitely probably the biggest part of it in my own head. Um, you know, I've also had a had a look at where I'm strong, where I'm not. Use the analysis, lent on the coaches and lent on my own coaches to sort of, you know, make those movements in my game. Um, so you know, I, I, I can't put my finger on it's been any one thing, but I feel like maybe maybe a mindset shift. Um, you know, that I, I want to be uh, the person winning more games for England. Uh, have you come, have you come to terms, or uh, also come to understand in your own mind that, like, say when you were flying at the IPL and you write the run scoring charts, that that when you go out to bat. People scared of you. Uh, you like to think so as an opening batter, but I, I feel like the moment you recognise that is is you know, and you, and you start thinking like I'm the big I am. I feel like the game's always going to bite you. So for myself, I, I try not to think about anything like that and, and keep it one ball at a time. We've got Gemma at the front here. Yeah. Well, that's a bit about the experience of you know living here in Barbados. Yeah, I, I loved it. Um, you know, came out here when I was nine or ten. I think um, you know everything about the place suits me. Uh, pretty laid back, a lot of cricket, a lo lot of sport. You know, still got a lot of friends on the island. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's too many people that would disagree that living in Barbados is, <laughs> is, a, is a touch but um, yeah I loved it you played for Barbados tried to see the CPL but what is it being now here in England terms yeah it's as I said before it's you know it's I watched England here watched them win it and you know I think every kid in the crowd would have gone that's going to be me one day or I'd like that to be me one day but you never believe it so now to be here in an England shirt, you know, with the opportunity to do something special in the next month is is, is incredible, really. Mel, go ahead, please. Oh, I was just wondering if, like, particularly say when you walk out today for a match, is, is there any memory from 2010 that really strikes you? Is there something specific you remember from that day? Whether it was you, what you were doing all the time? Yeah, uh, Collie came past up this stand here, um, I think Hall and Griffith, I think, where I was sat upstairs watching the final and he came past with the trophy and said, hey, I'll touch it while you can. Um, so I got a touch of the trophy that day. That was, that, that's the thing that always sticks with me when I think about that day. Any more questions? Yeah, Ali, go ahead. How do you, how do you and Joss sort of, you know, sort of form this theory of your parts? You've got the top well in the Caribbean. How can you see it? So it's how it works, it? Contrast the styles, what you think styles are. Yeah, we do have different styles. I don't think, you know, it's a pretty organic partnership in that I've always, you know, in my career bit, been the aggressor, and I suppose I'm the aggressor early on in this in this partnership. Um, you know, I feel like we both showcased it pretty well at the Oval the other night. You know, I didn't get a, a flyer, but you know, we sort of hung in, and then Joss went. And then I went and we, we, we dovetailed nicely. Um, it's, it's good because we both communicate a lot out there and we realise that when one goes, we feed the strike to the other person. 
Um, so, you know, there's, there's no ego about it. It's, it's whoever goes first, you know, you, we just communicate and it sounds really simple, but you know, there's, I've batted with a lot of people and it's not always the case. So it's nice when you have that sort of connection with the partner. Um, I feel like it probably didn't click straight away, you know, probably first year of the hundred when we first opened together. Um, but you know, it didn't take long at all we've taken a couple of games um and it's, it's actually quite similar to bank with luke right um i had a similar role with him at sussex you know he liked to take a few balls um so my role at the time was just to get get us off to a flyer and um you know that probably stood me in good stead for for batting with someone like joss and, and you're gonna have your guessing you know you're gonna have your it's a little bit of a scenario that we used to kind of like we saw when those kind of big it's just passing to threaten the I hope it's a good wicket. Um, I, I'm, to be honest, I'm the worst at reading pitches. Whatever I think, I'm, I'm normally completely wrong. Um, so I hope it's a good wicket. But, you know, cricket over here is very different to almost anywhere else in the world. Um, you know, conditions are very different. The wind, do you want to bat first on a tacky one or chase on something that'll be harder to bat on? You know, there's so many different decisions here with the way that the wickets play um you know and the breeze as i mentioned it's you know i, w I wish i could predict what it's going to be but i feel like the whole competition is going to take some nows phil go ahead and then finish with john yeah I, pl I played cricket for harrison college yeah she was she was yeah 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 <laughs> it was yeah it was it was good i remember um one of my mates who i won't mention got got dropped from the team and for Haley because she she bowled more wicket taking deliveries um you know that was really, at the time you know at the time we were, we were thinking oh he's not gonna like this but then she played and we all went she should definitely be in the team <laughs> so that was one of my first memories of Haley. But obviously, what she's gone on to do in her career speaks for itself. She's she's an unbelievable cricketer. So um, you know, hopefully, cross paths with her at some point in the next month. Well, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was really good. It was you know. Um, I used to go down there and have a net with a few mates uh, on a Thursday night, but then sometimes I'd stay on for the for the senior training afterwards. And I just keep. I didn't really bat very much, but I just kept. And um, I think I've had a lot of experiences in Barbados that I don't think I would have been afforded um, overseas. So you know, for a thirteen year old lad to to be netting around people like Kirk Edwards, Craig Brathwaite, Jason Holder, all these guys, and just being able to talk cricket and learn the game off of them, see how they operate, um, you know, very unique experiences and, you know, definitely stood me in good stead. George, to finish off, please. I just want to go back to the tennis coach thing. So I remember from that place, short table, but I'm still alive. So you had a big hit in a breaking pattern for six, and you were able to pull all that. I was wondering if there's anyone else in that side that's particularly like a hero or a player for the player. Craig Keyswetter was definitely one. I remember watching him. He was, to me, he was a bit of an unknown at the time. And then he came out, um, and uh, you know, I was in awe of him. Uh, I thought it was brilliant. You know, took some incredible catches and the way he played. Um, certainly, someone I tried to model myself on at the time. Um, but you know, I watched I watched a lot of good cricket here. People like to see, uh, Chris Gale. I'm pretty sure Chris Gale got a hundred here. Um, or he got a lot of runs and that that was incredible. It was when I was a kid, anybody anybody who hit the ball hard or kept or I'd 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 watch them on YouTube and just try and try and emulate them. Uh I've not really thought about it like that. I, you know, I think it's very different. I think we're, we're coming here as defending champions. Um, you know, I think it's going to take a lot to win the World Cup. 
I feel like we're capable of doing it. And I th in what you've just said there, you know, there, it's going to take guys to do ugly roles and sort of do it ugly for us to have the results we want out here. Um, you talk about the Mike Yardy role, you know, I remember him bowling the hard overs, a lot of that competition. Um, so, you know, I think whatever happens, if we, if we end up where, where we want to be, it's going to, it's going to be a real squad effort. Brilliant. Cheers, Salty. Thank you. Cheers, guys.